And we're live with the Chester Sky Show. Today's guest is Tobias Wienick. Uh, welcome aboard. He's the uh, director, organizer of Kino Toronto. Yeah, hey, Chester. Good having uh, uh, me here. Uh, so tell, tell us a little bit about uh, Kino for the listeners, just to yeah. give them a little background. Yeah, sure. So, so Kino Toronto or Kino in in the base idea was was funded in 1999 by uh, uh, two guys from Montreal, and so it's a Canadian thing, and they they invented it. It was basically, um, it was driven by the fear of the millennium, like in 2000, the world would become to an end, and they would basically have n- done none films at all. So they said, okay, we want to make films. Uh, and and uh, they had kind of like the, the, the mini eight or the DV, like the, the old camcorders, they were suddenly so affordable. So you could actually make films. So they just started making every month. They did a film for the whole year. And they met with friends in their living rooms and just watched those films and enjoyed it. And yeah, it became bigger and bigger. And suddenly it's, uh, it's now a movement since 20 years Technical and people world. gather together make films together and then come together and watch them uh, in the in the in the um, cinema or in yeah uh, <laughs> best case cinema worst case uh, 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 in some bar <laughs> but uh, i mean it's nice it's a it's a nice get together it's a good community so yeah so Kino seems to be a really great place to network to meet new people and uh, i when i personally came to toronto i found it was just a playground where you met all these filmmakers and directors and actors and animators all in the same place um it, that's kind of the goal right yeah absolutely and i mean the, the great thing about kino is that it is uh basically uh, not with the idea of of money in place but it's more to be creative and to live that and, and i mean there are like a lot of artists or or you can make a lot of art with not so much crew but if you want to make film yeah. it's always hard to make a film alone so kino is trying to get people together and just unconditionally say okay we want to make a film i have that idea that there's one guy he brings the camera you, you come together there there may be actors that want to try out never have acted before and then you come to and shoot something and you de- shoot with somebody together you you get a better connection because like when you're just networking somewhere you never know how another person it's it's a it's a black box so kino actually shows you ah okay that's actually pretty nice or oh okay he is not totally not on my on my wavelength so it's yeah. it's kind of like a, a nice experimenting place to meet new people to find uh, uh, partnerships to make stuff together but at the same time also develop yourself because uh it's you're running on a shoestring, no money. You have to get it done. And uh, yeah, we, we, we usually like announce the next screening and say, hey, we have that and that topic. Make a film for that. And so kind of like you have a deadline coming mm-hmm. closer. You have a team and then you, you just make. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the essential idea about Kino. Yeah. yeah. How, how did you get into Kino in the first place? Because you don't just walk in and start organizing it. Do you? you must have been <laughs> making films for a while before. Well, well, I mean, I I started filming, I think, when like somewhere 2010, or I believe, okay. like something like that. Decade ago. So, so I, <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> 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 long, long time ago. But hey, what can you do? So, so I was with a friend, and we were shooting some random stuff, and then I saw in one forum, I saw like a Kino in Hamburg, mm-hmm. and they were doing a Kino cabaret. Which is kind of like a, a, a kino cabaret, and this in this in this idea is basically a boot camp. So they 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 rent the place, gather people together, and then shoot something for like three days. So kind yeah. of like every director that comes, or like all those ideas getting put up on a wall, and teams getting like getting together, like their actors, musicians, filmmakers, DOPs, whatever. Everybody who has really like has time the weekend free. 
And uh, usually also, if you come from further away, they, they find somebody maybe who can host you. So it's kind oh, of wow. like a really dirt yeah. cheap way to get to a different city. Like like for me, uh, Hamburg was kind of like around about 500 meters. It's probably mm. not... Ah, yeah, by the way, I'm from Germany. So just <laughs> for, for the viewer. Um, so so from, from where I'm uh, where I'm born and uh, raised, it's like 500 kilometers. So going there, meeting all these people, then, then shooting a film. And I... I um, it was like just a weekend, but yeah. it, it totally initiated the flame. So I, I made this, this this super weird film about a guy who has a, a phobia of uh, shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so he basically has to kind of, uh, yeah, if... if it, it, because I saw it myself when I was shopping, I was always trying to optimize it. And I, I like, if there's something that took too long, I, I like, mm. I disliked it. So I, I, I mean, I stepped at the game up for the film, but yeah. it's, it's, it's called a Kaufwahn, which is translated into shopping, shop, shopping madness. Ooh, and so, uh, perfect. Uh, um, we, uh, and we, the funny thing is we actually found a little, uh, a corner shop, that had like those trolleys because we needed a trolley. Yeah, like yeah. we stole the trolley actually from the different shop. So we brought the, sh but we got the, we, uh, we asked the owner who was there, hey, can we maybe shoot like two or three hours? And he said, mm -hmm. ah, I have to talk. And then they figured it out and they come back and said, yeah, yeah, sure. Come. Ooh. So we shot in the, in the shop. <laughs> and that was like, we gathered Friday. We got the idea on Saturday, mm -hmm. shot Saturday afternoon, edited on Sunday. And then uh, the screening was already on Sunday. So it's like, palm, oh, wow. palm, palm. And 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 you have like this insane schedule of like forty eight hours to make a, and I think in the end the film was probably like four minutes or so. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I I I um yeah, it taught me a lot. Like that that really like uh, especially I had a great editor, and okay, he he like like the idea that I had he 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 um he took that. Mm. And the, the way he montaged the things together, I never had envisioned that. So I was like I wonder if totally uh, blown away. And especially the editors, because they're like, sorry? No, I was just going to yeah. say, I would love to see what that video looked like now. It sounds like it was the first yeah, video I, I to mean, go back and check it out now, <laughs> decade later. I can I can probably get anyone to see it. It's a silent <laughs> one. So for 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 people that have uh, uh, like uh, that not speak German, they would still understand it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's it's hilarious. It's it's still a nice memory. And so yeah, from from that that experience, I started to go to all these different places. Like mm -hmm. I, I went uh, Hamburg a few times, but later also to to Tel Aviv. They have a very beautiful cabaret. Uh, Dublin, Shanghai. Mm -hmm. So like Kino really coming from Montreal exploded over the world so to say and and these are all local things mm -hmm. so everything is independent and it's just um, usually like one or two people saying hey we want to make a kino cell and they start that and they gather together other people and then they they just uh, find a nice venue and do these kino cabarets um like i have to say that kino toronto right now is a little bit different we have uh, we have not uh, this 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 idea of a kino cabaret but we are doing monthly or two monthly screenings okay. so uh, we basically uh, uh, like before the pandemic started we were basically meeting at the medicine uh, pub for uh, uh, pro probably every two months for a screening and every month uh, every uh, months in between for a, a just a networking session if yeah, you have a problem nice. with the film and you need somebody to go there so 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 uh, right now we are quarantine program so we do it all <laughs> via zoom and hope that at some point we can return to normality but i mean yeah uh, i mean we have to rent the, the space and get the projector and everything so if nobody comes to our screenings there's no point in doing something like that yeah. so so right now it's just not a yeah, but uh, we will see. Maybe next year uh, there will be uh, uh, some some screenings again. I hope so. We will see. What did you find was different when you were traveling around the world and looking at different kinos in like Shanghai? Or what, how, what did they do differently? So I think that that I think the biggest difference between all cabarets is probably between Montreal and between the rest. <laughs> like oh. you really have to like you have to really draw a, a very distinctive line between those two because they are just different from the idea. 
uh, not, I mean, the core idea is the same, but the execution is just different. Like Montreal has basically a selection process. Oh. So you can send your application to, to take part in the cabaret. And they basically say, okay, we have like, we have slots for 10 films each round. They do three rounds, like the whole cabaret in Montreal takes about almost like two weeks. Oh. So not quite, but, but it, it, so, so, but, and in this, in this 10, in this, it's kind of like, you have three rounds. Every round has three uh, three days, so it's seventy two hours. And then there's always one day in between because they have a lot of equipment that they rent out to other to to filmers. So you oh, have wow. to like, like they, they basically are partnered with with like they are they are partnered with Cinepool and with um, Montreal Grande Camera, which are like actually you can get an Ari Alexa. The best camera they offer you is an Alexa, like the same camera they shot Game of Thrones off with, and and like it's it's really serious. It's, but at the same time, you will only get that if you, if you have like a solid crew. Like they're not giving that to a beginner. They have other cameras for somebody who is yeah, like yeah, yeah. new or where like you need the first and the second camera operator if you, if you and, and the DOP if you, if you, if you plan to shoot something on an Alexa. Like I was never, I, I, I made a film for, for in, at the Kino Cabaret in Montreal. Like, uh, I mean, I came to Canada to actually see how Montreal was and then I oh. got stuck. Uh, because of, of uh, girlfriend and, and stuff. So that's how I actually landed here. Um, Kino was the first reason to actually try and see how it is. So oh, I, wow. I made a film there. And in the end, I shot actually on my GH5 uh, from Panasonic, uh, uh, even though I was not DOPing it, but uh, um, because I thought it was just a small format mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't want to make it too complicated. So. Yeah. Uh, it, it needed like if you want to move fast, it's always like even if uh, if you have a big crew, you can do it. But it's also very smaller crew, less gear, and then and then and then move quicker. And uh, um, but I have huge respect for people that actually are able to pull that off and shoot it on Alexa. It's nice. <laughs> I wish I could do it, but not yet. I have to have to pick your fights, and if you either you fight with a camera or or you you fight with the whole production stuff. Sounds so, like uh, sounds like in Montreal they actually have like judges. Then they're they're, they're seriously making sure uh, no they, actually no? not no so so the thing is also montreal is non-judgmental so they 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 like you put you pitch your idea or you say who you are you want to make a film and then uh, they basically select like 30 directors to make those films oh, yeah. but afterwards there's no price so you just make it and they have this really nice cinema so everybody like gathers there and so so you watch those films and um, what Montreal does to incorporate everybody to make films is basically they do a defi, like challenges. So they say, uh, on this screening, we actually do a challenge on the topic Blue, uh, Blue Night. I don't know if you know it, but Blue Nuit is basically like was one of the challenge topics yeah. where I was involved in, in shooting a film. And it's the, the, the um, I think, 90s uh, yeah, uh, uh, a late night <laughs> television. So, so, yeah. so basically, these things um, they 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 do, and so that basically gives you also a time limit. So you have to make a defeat that is maximum like one minute, two minute, thirty seconds, fifteen seconds. So it really like they they have those time limits, and then you have that. So everybody can make a film, even if you mm -hmm. are just an actor or, no, I mean, just uh, if you're an actor who's never done a film, it's, it's a way to just make something and see, hey, actually, it's not that hard. I can do it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's really empowering to have that, that possibility to, to make a film. Um, and so, um, let me finish the sentence. Uh, so, yeah. And, and they also have kind of like a little bit not in the cinema, in the real cinema, but in the in the Kino Lab. That's the place where like people come together, where there's a, a little room to edit, and you have kind of like they, they give you food and stuff like that. So and that's where they also do a little screening in between rounds. So kind of like they have a they have a, a and then I think they had a, like a two minute documentary film. And to to explain why Montreal differs so much from the other Kino Cabaret, so the, the, the Kino Cabaret that I told uh, you before, is because just so huge. Yeah. The problem is, if everybody in Montreal participates in a Kino Cabaret, and everybody makes a film, you will, like, the, the screening will start maybe at 8 p.m., and you will get out of the cinema at 6 a.m. in the morning. And it's not fun. Mm. So, like to cut it down to make it handlebar, 
like yeah. to, to, to give everybody a chance, but also to kind of like have a, a chance to have enough equipment for each film. They kind of like had to say, okay, what we want to do, we want to have good films. They need to have uh, like we want to like we want to have more quality but less quantity, mm-hmm. and that's the way they chose to make that happen. Um, everywhere else, it's basically uh, limited. I mean, Hamburg is also pretty big. I think it's almost the biggest cabaret in Europe. Yeah, and they do it purely by limiting people coming to the screening. Like I think, uh, I think the biggest number they had was 300 people joining a kino cabaret for a week and they couldn't handle it it was the the, the screenings were just too long and it was not possible no, so what they do nice. now is okay we, we, we limit it like 250 and say everybody every director should only do uh, uh, one film mm-hmm. i mean it's not happening but that's what they want so yeah, okay. uh uh, um, um, but, but yeah, uh, to kind of like make sure that the screenings are still fun and that mm-hmm. every film gets the attention that they deserve. Uh, because otherwise, you know, it's it's just the, the way to to if you're too getting too big, you have to figure out what to do. And I mean, yeah. <laughs> in Toronto right now, it's it's not our issue. We still have to like we we're doing just the the monthly two monthly screenings. So uh, there's still a lot way to grow until we have to think about anything <laughs> that is that. But uh, yeah, it's still a nice uh, nice venue, even if it's small. The the, the people are nice. So why? I, I don't need like it doesn't need to be big. It no, uh, it needs really. to be uh, a good a good atmosphere and uh, needs to give you energy to to do to get shit done. I think that's the main idea of of Kino Toronto right now. We want I'd to animate I- people to make films to get better to grow. Well, arguably, this is the best kind of education you can get in filmmaking. I mean, you can go and take courses and learn the theory, but it means nothing until you've actually shot something. And then the nice part here is you actually meet people who may or may not be much better than you. Which is really cool. And then, Absolutely. And showing it on an actual screen for someone who's never made a film before is like, what the hell? I just made a movie. They just showed it in a theater. That, I don't know. To me, that was incredible. I wasn't expecting that when I first walked in. Yeah, and it, it's actually that easy. I mean, it, yeah. like it, it's just like the venue, the projector, and like uh, like it's really it's really not hard. So so basically, I think that's also what some like what what really uh, pushed the movement yeah. that today with the smartphones and the cameras, it's so easy to make a film. And what I've noticed is I, I did. Um, uh, I did a few contests where you had like a weekend to shoot a film and then there was a judgmental process and at yeah. the end there was a jury. And I found myself getting very, very tensioned about mm. it. It's like I was really like trying my best to make the amazing film mm-hmm. um, that I wanted to and I didn't like it. <laughs> it was <laughs> like, like I, I feel like for me, filmmaking is something that needs to be fun, but the mm-hmm. art needs also to come something from some of a free space. Mm. Like if you're constantly thinking, what will the audience mm. think of that? And you never do what you think is right. Mm. I'm not sure if you're making a film that represents you or if you're making a film that you try to make as many people happy around you as possible. It's true. So there is, I mean, maybe like in a competition, I think it's very quickly to go there, mm-hmm. uh, 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 and and then so so. I mean, I really enjoy kino cabarets, and I and I I, I also kind of like the energy because yeah. everybody around you is freaking busy, and you're just like getting animated. Okay, like I still have not. <laughs> I, I need to do something now, or or I think I think last year at uh, no not last year, but I think my last cabaret in in, in Hamburg, um, I was actually uh, uh, sitting in the evening at the bar and I was like, I wanted to make a film, but nothing worked. And I was like down and I talked to uh, friends from, from Tel- that I met in, in Kino Tel Aviv. They were also in Hamburg doing films and they were like talking, talking, and they really built me up. And in the end yeah. I decided, I think it was, it was 12 PM and the next screening was next evening at, I believe around 9 PM. It was scheduled. It was an outdoor screening. And I, I, I started making the film and I finished it on time. <laughs> yeah. So like, then, then you suddenly, get, like as soon as you get it going, it, it kind of like falls all together. And uh, yeah, I mean, 
I, I think that is something where where Kino uh, really uh, shines because uh, like the the different people gather and and the energy that that creates is just uh, just uh, yeah amazing. Like you don't imagine what like uh, sleeping. Who cares? <laughs> well, you bring, <laughs> you, up an work. <laughs> you bring up an interesting point that Kino is different than a money competition because. Like when you're dealing with money competition, you think, how do I beat the other film? That's the entire focus. Whereas this one is like, let me see what creative thing I can do. Which is, Absolutely. you come up with very different films because when you have different incentives like that. Yeah. I mean, I have to admit, not everything is, is, is perfect. But often you find, if you look at them the first time, you mm. think, well, gosh, what's that? What, like, yeah, you see some I weird ones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like I sometimes uh, we get submitted a film and I look at the first time and I'm like, ah. <laughs> okay, interesting. And then it gets screened because it's the right length. So mm -hmm. what can yeah. I do? <laughs> <laughs> and we have enough time in the screening. <laughs> so there's not, and in the, in the screening, I see it with a different eye. Mm. Even in the quarantine screening, when sitting at home in front of the of the television or television, not but in front of my laptop, I see the film with a second eye, and I'm like, "Hey, mm -hmm. that is actually very interesting." Mm -hmm. And and it it it's it's kind of like mesmerizing that when you when you pre-screen something, it's a totally different experience than if you're actually live on the air watching something. Yeah. And so I think it's sometimes like you, you like some films then also only work when people are laughing, That's looking true. at it That's or, 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 or like the, the audience gives also kind of like everything a different touch. I mean, and the zoo meeting, it's hard, but mm. But uh, uh, I mean, that's that's something. And like we like in the quarantine screening, we we also emphasize that there's no like. Uh, n I mean, you can do uh, a criticizing comments, but it needs to be polite and it needs to have substance. Mm -hmm. If there's somebody who who just, uh, I mean, they have never happens uh, and, uh, until now. But if there uh, there would be somebody who who is kind of like judgmental in a very negative way, we would probably just kick him out yeah. or her. Uh, so, so that's something that that uh, that we try to keep because it's a it's an experiment. Everybody has the chance to experiment, to try out, try themselves out, and that's something that we really want to focus on because yeah. you will not grow if you're not try. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's no pain, no gain. But also, if you if you're not trying and you don't have the the the, the space to do something, then it's 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 not possible to grow. Well, I remember there were a few films that. I, we, I was watching a Kino. Um, one of them specifically was Paul's video. And I remember, I think it was like two, two minutes of whatever, some video. But then there was like five minutes of credits. <laughs> and I just remember the reaction out of the audience was they were cheering because the credits kept going on and on. And it's only like one guy's name in the credit, but like different roles for like five minutes. Director, writer, screen actor, DOP, the same name over and over. And the audience just got more and more riled up. And that would never work unless it was in the live screening keynote scenario. And uh, the audience loved oh, absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, it would never work anywhere else. Yeah. But I mean, if, you, if you're like talented and you, you do all these things in your film, <laughs> it's, it's also quite uh, uh, amazing because I think it's also like, yeah. Uh, but I, I, th I think I think I know the film that you're talking about, and I believe <laughs> that the that the that the credits in itself were not too boring. They were not no, the even like the, really the crowd good. was cheering, but the credits actually they had uh, they, 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 like there was still stuff happening. So it was not just the, like a black screen and white stuff mm -hmm. going around. But I think I think he he really put some effort into them. Yeah, like so, the film was uh, okay, but I the think, credits yeah. were incredible. <laughs> Uh, and that's not like the only time, like a lot of the time yeah. I see videos in Kino where just the reaction out of the audience is really what you wouldn't expect if you were to watch the video in isolation. Like, um, uh, for example, like some of, you remember the shake weight video? Or some of raise the naked video, you know, some of those. Yeah. Like the reaction you get. <laughs> oh, we have to talk about the pins. Oh yes. We talk have about to talk pins. about the pins. Explain what the pins are for. Yeah. 
So, so basically, what we do to encourage making films, and now uh, quantity actually matters. <laughs> so, what we do is uh, the the first film you get like a black pin that is uh, kind of like the 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 like we have the Kino logo, Kino Toronto logo, and and so we we you can basically put that on your on your on your shirt, and it shows I've done one film as a director Here's your at award. Kino. And so when it comes to your, yeah, exactly. So instant gratification. <laughs> uh, so you, you come to the third, you come to the third uh, uh, film and uh, you start with the RGB colors. So we have basically a red for the third, uh, the green for the fifth film, and then the seventh film uh, gives you uh, blue. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so we have this color coding uh, to, to encourage making films. and. Um, yeah, like a, the general. <laughs> like done the black already, belts like, and karate. Uh, I don't you know. I think. I think uh, ex exactly. You work to the belts, and we actually uh, have something in store for the the tense film. Oh. But the color has not yet. It never. Nobody has ever cracked the tense film. Uh, and I mean, there is still a little bit of of time. So we're waiting for that to happen. Chester, you're actually damn close. I'm damn uh, close. I'm not man. sure where you are, but I think it's yeah. And you're making every 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 week you're making a film, so uh, it's it's uh, it's gonna take <laughs> not so long to get there. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean uh, that's uh, that's that's the way we want to encourage. Ah, yeah, and the Raymond Tam. So mm, so basically, we have one pin. member who really likes to get a <laughs> very special pin who really uh, likes to to include a nudity in his films usually himself <laughs> and uh but in in a funny way it's not like gross or something so um i think we we all have get the laughter out of it so we we decided to actually make a um, a raymond pin which mm. is uh, basically him uh in his pose <laughs> on the pin and everybody who has uh, uh, like some scene where an actor gets uh, uh, like <laughs> has not so much clothes anymore on, uh, 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 usually they get a, a Raymond pill, a Raymond pin. Uh, so, <laughs> so that's the that's the idea to to. <laughs> I mean, it's but actually it is something that is it's not happening often. So I think. It's all, and it's also interesting to see who dares to do that. Yeah. So uh, for us, as an experiment, just to give people an idea, hey, actually, you could do something like that, and it might be interesting, uh, especially like uh, with the 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 uh, yeah the very uh, prudent uh, film industry. So mm -hmm. like everything gets put on the gold scale, and so it's uh, it, like playing around with it. I think it's always part of of a film. So why not? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, when I first saw, I think that was like one of the first videos I ever saw on Keto. I thought, oh, this is a very different festival. <laughs> but uh, the, the reaction of the, with the audience was cheering it on, which made it, oh, this is actually, this is really accepted. This is a lot of fun here. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's also something where you, where you, where you can see like uh, as a director, it's mm -hmm. highly interesting to see your film on the big screen and you have an audience watching and you see how they react. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, it gives you a very good idea of what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So like, not only did you grow by making the film, but you also showed it and you also got a feedback loop. So you see how the audience reacts. And then later, if you get to know, like if you talk to somebody, they're also going to say something. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I like that, or I like that, and and so so this kind of like gives you the ability much better in the internet, uh, uh, where 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 uh, you're not sure if they really watched, and uh, so so it's kind sure. of like a really nice way to to figure out what you just created, <laughs> because especially with those experiments, sometimes you have no bloody clue yeah, yeah. how it's going to work. If well, it's going to work, too. what's going to work? So, oh yeah, for sure. Like, uh, I I know sometimes directors haven't seen the last cut, where I'm like, what? 
<laughs> that's really happening okay but uh, uh it happens and um yeah it's it's uh from for me it would not be a possible way to work mm. but if you're new and you have like it's your first film okay yeah the editor makes the cuts so uh, uh and then so, <laughs> like sometimes there's also an issue and they have to uh like if it's the last may sometimes it happens that they that they were editing until the day of the screening yeah. we had the we have we have uh, uh, one one member who is the last minute, minute Matt, who basically sits in the screening. Uh, uh, I mean, shortly before the screening, and he finishes his film mostly <laughs> somewhere uh, 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 during during when the when the when the screening starts and uh, mm-hmm. renders while the first films run. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredible. Uh, he likes the uh, that, uh, but that's something. Oh yeah, for sh- for, for sure, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, me me uh, doing the, the screening and doing the, doing the moderation, I usually can't do it. I've done it. Mm. <laughs> There's actually a funny anecdote about uh, me um, it taught me a great lesson. This film, it it was a really nice uh, a film. We had uh, we had basically it's a love story where um, where the couple goes uh, like uh, 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 they're not happy with the relationship and so they they basically okay uh, they they try to date somebody else while they're still together but unfortunately they meet in the internet again <laughs> so so actually what happens is like they, they they meet in a in a in a um in a bar like they 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 set this up the meeting and when when he arrives he he sees her sitting there and so she's like nah i can't go in there and he rushes away and in the end they they just learn by by the the messenger sounds when he's texting he 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 basically hears the sound out of the other room and so but um and then they they figure out uh, actually they they were uh Searching and then I found himself back. So it's a, it, it's a, it was a nice uh, oh, shot. Cute. But the, 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 the lesson that I learned shooting that, it was a 72 hour uh, time period that we shot it sure. in. And I had everything ready and I was sitting in the cinema and I was almost uh, finished editing. And then I was like, okay, let's, let's do the, the export. And my problem is I, uh, I got this laptop from a friend who also was at the cabaret. Mm. And so I never checked actually if I could export a video and I was missing a codec pack. So it was, uh, the program was Lightworks and it can, can only export the film if the Matrox codec pack is installed at that time. Maybe today it's changed. It's back in the days. So I had the film ready on the laptop. Everything was done and I could not screen it because I couldn't export it. That was the worst screening ever like like because you want to show appreciation to your to the team that worked so hard to get it all done no. and and so today whenever i set up a, 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 a like whenever i set up an editing system anywhere I check the import with the material from the <laughs> camera and I check the export in the yeah. format that i want to render yeah. just to make sure that everything works because yeah and i mean i didn't have internet like there was no way to download anything no. during the screening, and so that was that was that was uh, that was really annoying. Like, uh, but in the end, we finished the film, so so that's always good. Sure but yeah, uh, hmm? showed it the following keynote. You know. <laughs> no, it's it's no? too long. Oh, no, no we want to. <sighs> Yeah, no, it, it, it's online. Yeah, like mm. like uh, the others, like they they usually land online uh, at some point. So, but yeah. No, uh, I, yeah, I, that's yeah. one of the things that you pick up very soon is oh, when you're filming, oh, we should have spare batteries, or else you learn the hard way. Oh, we should have. Oh yeah, you should have a backup. Yeah, absolutely. This backup that. Uh, make sure you send everything like a few hours ahead of time, just in case everything crashes or. And what's also great is that you can usually make at Kino mistakes mm. that don't cost you a lot. Yes. So you do your mistakes there. Yeah. And basically, you just wasted the time of uh, some people, or maybe the 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 uh, thing that you that you, the film that you made is mm-hmm. has like one weak spot, or like the sound wasn't good. Most of the times, it isn't good. Mm-hmm. But I mean, 
it's hard to get proper sound. Like really good sure. sound is so so hard, is so incredible hard to reach. So uh, that's that's usually where you can really see how 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 uh, good somebody is if they manage to get the proper sound in a film. Um, so. So you notice these weak spots and also like in the in the screening because you have the screening room and people sometimes they're not able to understand your actors because uh, uh, the screening room suddenly sounds so different than your headphones. Yeah. And all these, these things you learn with very little resources. You don't invest a lot. Like, and, and, and there, are, there are kino films that go to festivals and sometimes also win stuff. Like sure. it's it's really it's something uh, 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 that you can it's it's a, it's a hub you can meet people but you can also make if you have, if you find the right people you can make a really good film yeah it's 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 totally in your own power and so uh, that that is kind of like um, that's that's the beauty of it mm-hmm. and so so you can make all these mistakes in a situation where you don't have a, a client in your back. Uh, who does not uh, uh, want to have it done by then and then. I mean, we set a deadline, but if you don't make it, okay, you, you show it at the next screening. Yeah. Like there are always ways to, to get it done. So so uh, that's kind of like, at least for me, it was a good school because I could do a lot of mistakes and and uh, uh, now I I have done, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still doing them sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. But it's 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 sometimes something that you that you just uh, yeah when it when it really would matter you would you would do it also a little bit different for real like yeah. uh, if you're getting paid for a gig it's a different story and you you just approach the whole thing different but it's up to everybody everybody yeah. can decide okay I wanna I wanna really use that piece as my demo reel so I go out rent some gear for yeah, it I want to send this light I want to have that that that, that camera you, you get your, your crew together maybe you pay the sound guy because you couldn't find somebody who was as good as him and then you just use that resources and then shoot something and I mean the people in your project like the actors they're gonna be very happy about the opportunity to use it for their show reel mm-hmm. and you maybe submit it to a festival so I mean like this is kind of like if everybody agrees to the terms and says, "Yeah, sure, I'm gonna. I like the idea. I like the script. It's very nice. It's gonna be a good chance for me to prove myself to yeah. use it." And everybody works on it as a pro bono thing and just like because for the sake of the story and and because it's just uh, art. Like that. That's basically the the the, the way that uh, kino can be used if you want to for basically anything. I. There were people trying to shoot a, 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 a feature with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it failed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I yeah. wouldn't try it. I mean, but the, the one who dares wins. So maybe it's yeah. possible. <laughs> but I've, I've seen, uh, like, there's always, if you have a good idea that is doable, it's maybe possible. Like, I think you have to kind of, like, adjust a lot of things. And maybe you're able to pull it off. But yeah, if I you think- do it, you're going to get some honorable mentions. <laughs> For real. I, th- I think to remember like one of the most interesting parts was how the audience reacts to your film, which is not how you expect it to. Like uh, I remember just whenever, I've, whenever an actor walks on the stage that is in the room, people have seen that guy in the room. So they're kind of excited to see them on the screen, which is it's, it's not something you can experience in a regular scenario. Even if you go to an actual movie theater, if the guy was in the audience, no one would know, no one would give a damn. But because they're in the room and you were just talking to the guy five minutes before, like, oh, I want to cheer this guy on when he comes on the screen. There's something yeah. very exciting about that. And I mean, also, like, you have this, this Q&A. So what we do in the online screening, yes, that's right. but also on the, on the, on the, on the real stage in the, in the, in the uh, venue, uh, we, we always get the, the um, directors, sometimes even the complete crew on stage and do a short interview. and, and uh, the base idea is just to figure out what they were doing, wh- why, and also kind of like it gives them the, the ability to be there. Mm. And so everybody suddenly knows, ah, this is the director. Okay, I've seen that face of that film. So then there is kind of like, and at some point you notice, okay, uh, that's actually, uh, he makes really good stuff. I want to yeah, work yeah, with yeah. him. So you can approach him and then see, maybe there is some some sort of collaboration that comes out of it. And, and you basically uh, can do something. And ah, we have forgotten to talk about the challenges. So yes. Kino Toronto also does challenges. So, so basically we have like two 
big categories of films. Mm. We have the regular films and the challenge films. Mm. So basically, regular films is any film that is below eight minutes, it's a soft limit. But below eight minutes, like, like I can tell you, if somebody submits a film that is longer than eight minutes, we usually screen it, look, if it's nice and everything. But then we also see, okay, this screening has now reached the capacity and we basically sh- push it to the next screening. So, so to to say, okay, this is a long film. Like we have now two long films for one screening. Uh, we 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 will screen you a later date, but you will get screened. Yeah. So that's usually the way. So to have some sort of load balancing, because sometimes you have like people that have finished their festival run and they have a film and they want to screen it locally. So they come approach us, hey, uh, can we screen it? And interestingly, there's also people that want to go to a festival. And they do an undercover screening with us. Yeah. So they can actually submit their film and say, hey, don't advertise it anywhere. Just just show it. And I want to get feedback from the audience. Mm-hmm. What they liked, what they didn't like, how the edit works, and so on and so forth. So to get a feeling of what their film is doing. Yeah. We are not going to say anything that this film has been screened. And I mean... Kino Toronto is basically not a film festival. Like we really try hard to work on that. Not, it's really hard to not, to 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 not understand, or it's really hard to understand. But uh, we we want to be more like a film school, like people coming together, making films, learning from it, and kind of like enjoying that. In, instead of being a festival where usually you want to win. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like it's a different approach, and it's yeah. it's but it's really hard to get that across because people only know film school and festival, yeah. like this is that there's something that is in between yeah. that is public while not. So so it's kind of like we are in Toronto. I think it's our main challenge to actually explain people, hey. We are actually a film school that you don't have to pay anything. Yeah. You just uh, 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 donate something at the door and, and enjoy uh, uh, the show and, and meet different people. Yeah. And, and at the same time, if you participate in films, exactly, networking. But you yeah. network while making films. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you're not just doing dry networking where you never knew, like you never know how somebody ticks until you figure out uh, he has only uh, uh, 10 hours and we have to shoot now. <laughs> See, that, that's <laughs> the thing that I always found is frustrating at film festivals is you can never really get to be with the guys before or after who just made the film. You just watch the film and then the next film comes and then they go home and you're like, oh, well, that director is cool, but I can't work with him now. Kino's the opposite. It's like, that's the purpose. You get to see the guy. You get to work with the guy after if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can approach basically uh, anybody. And I think also that there's not a lot of uh, uh, like uh, star dumb, like everybody's mm-hmm. super down to us. So there's there's usually like everybody is kind of like linked through Kino. So it's I think it's also very easy to approach somebody because yeah. uh, you know there is something common between everybody mm-hmm. and you can just go there. Hey, God, uh, hey, how are you doing? Hey, I really like that one of your film. Are you up to something? And then and then it, it just flows. And so you, you, you get got these connections and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think I, I, I at least one geek got actually from Kino because I was working with somebody together in Germany, and and she later became a, a, a became a, a, got to a local television a, a, a studio, and she she needed somebody to help her with the film. So so she she and I was living in the close area where she was shooting. So we just in the end uh, collaborated, and it was a paid gig. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so totally worked out. yeah, it's 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 really like uh, if you're lucky, yeah. And um, so, uh, but uh, yeah, the challenges. I started with regular films, and the, the, then we ended up with a screening. Let's go back to the challenges. Mm. So the challenges is basically, <laughs> ah, yeah, regular films. Don't, ah, we are getting there. So regular films don't have a topic and they're also longer. So everybody that wants to make a film uh, about what they care and what they feel like is important to them. Like it's basically the chance to make a maximum eight minute film about the topic uh, that you, that you choose. Where an opposite, the challenges is basically something that is limited to a certain time frame. Usually it's two minutes, mm-hmm. excluding the uh, 
uh, the, 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 the credits. So the credits in the end, they are separated. I mean, if somebody does like three minute credits, it's not going to be a challenge anymore. But the topic gets basically set by Kino Toronto. So we announce the topic for the next screening, uh, like usually on the, the screening night. And uh, so that basically, like, I mean, right now we have the screening topic. Uh, the time has come. Probably okay. sure when this podcast will air, uh, but uh, but but the time has come, and uh, so on the on the uh, let me 25th, judge. Right? Let's see. Like yeah, next week, twenty fifth of of twenty no- fifth of November is the screening. Yeah. So whoever wants to join, it's a Zoom screening. Uh, we're gonna put it on our. Uh, we usually uh, post the link on our Facebook event page. Yeah. Make sure you send uh, me the link as well. Few so minutes I can before seven thirty. Yeah, absolutely. Like on, on like we usually we post it on uh, under the uh, Facebook event page, like at uh, seven thirty, uh, and and like our our screening, like usually at seven thirty we start at, like half an hour a uh, shit chat. Uh, uh, people come together, and I mean, especially now during the quarantine, it's really nice to have kind of like have a place where you yeah. can actually talk and and see uh, people because it's it's a really a tough situation I think for everybody. And yeah. so, uh, and then we basically have like a, maybe an hour of films, always in between the, the Q&As on Zoom with the filmmakers. And so, yeah, that is, I believe, uh, yeah. And then later, it's just people continue talking. And mm-hmm. uh, I think usually, I think the last screening lasts until 11. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can and and actually the moderators were all gone. <laughs> it was just a few dudes <laughs> oh, you who can didn't long, have seen each other for a long time. Um, oh yeah, I mean, I think I think that like usually uh, uh, the the uh, Vlad, our, our technician who sets it up, I think it, it runs until one a.m. or something. I don't know, <laughs> uh, but uh, he, yeah, I mean. Who cares? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, that's like the yeah. And so, yeah, the challenge, you can win. There is actually a winner. But <laughs> the thing is, it's not announced by Kino Toronto. We want to be not judgmental. And so we said, okay, the audience decides that. So uh, we uh, usually we do it by applause. On uh, the Zoom call, we basically do it by, uh, 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 I believe, there is a little poll at the, uh, after yeah, yeah. we showed all I the, like the that. challenges. I like that. That thing's great. I really do like it because it's way more democratic. Yeah. <laughs> it's because like there are people that can clap louder than others. And, and yeah. if you're sitting closer to the, to the moderator, you also have more value in mm. your clapping. So, so there is certain things that, that uh, in, on Zoom are actually nicer. Yeah, that's uh, but the atmosphere better. is obviously not as good. Yeah, yeah I, th- I think so, totally. Like the, the, um, the, the, uh, that, is, that is really nice. That you can just and also the the um, like people use the 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 side to the comment on on, on yes, films. That's right. So you also have kind of like a live commentary of people. Hey, like when something uh, is is nice or whatever, they they basically hey hey how did you do that or or uh, mm. uh, so there's kind of like a little. Um, usually I look at it after the film, but it's it's it's, it's uh, and. It's also nice for me as a as a, I'm not I'm not doing the Q and A. Um, um, we have uh, somebody doing the Q and A's, but it's nice for him because he can also pick up those questions. Yes. So you have you have more dialogue between the audience and the the, the guy who's asking the questions. So yes. there's like, it's it's a uh, uh, it's nice. It's different. It's like YouTube uh, comments I mean, we, if they weren't bad, if they were actually useful, <laughs> good comments, and they weren't garbage and insulting all the time. Yeah. Can actually yeah, get some exactly useful. what <laughs> what what you would expect from a from a nice YouTube. <laughs> yes, a nice YouTube. Yeah, that, that's something you never really yeah. get is actually people saying constructive stuff. You don't get that on YouTube comments. That's not there. I I think I think you can find it. <laughs> but I think you you always also have to deal with very a lot of negativity. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think from the from the people that like the content creators, it's it's really tough to go through the comment section. Oh, for sure. Because I, I mean, it depends. It, it depends what you do. Like like there's there's so much garbage there. So it's 
the one good one you you don't see because you have to scroll to hundred hundred uh, <laughs> that are that are getting you down. Yeah. And so uh, yeah, like it's it's really sad actually that that yeah. such a, a big medium creates so much negativity. Well, I, I post insane. everything that I usually film online, and I I kind of have to avoid looking at the comments a lot of the time because. Some of them are really despairing. I'm like, oh, I, I actually was better off without reading it at all. Yeah, but no, I know that this is definitely a different situation where it's uh, actually a good view. So what about? Let's talk about some of your Kino films. Let's talk about some of your favorite ones um, that you've done when you were filming. Um. So, oh, <laughs> good question. Uh, let me think. So, I mean, like, I, I'm not entirely sure how many coverages I did in my entire life. You've I think, in, in, and I, I have to admit that I, well, I, I think the, 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 um, probably like maybe 10 to 15. Whew. So every, every summer I would go out, out like maybe, uh, two weeks or so one week here, one week there, yeah. uh, to, to just, uh, go and shoot stuff. And uh, so, not in all coverages I've done films. Like mm. uh, it's also an interesting experience when you when you actually don't shoot a film, but you just help others to make films. Yeah, sure. Uh, sometimes just some a young director or like uh, who has never done a film. I remember like uh, last year there is some uh, very nice uh, kino that is called um, Quick Kino. So that has the mm. the Quick Kino is basically always between Christmas and New Year. So what they say, it's the last chance of that year to make a film. So, so they usually meet on after Christmas, like on the 20th of, of December. Yeah. And on the 30th of December is the screening. Oh. So, um, and then uh, uh, whoever wants to stay can party New Year's Eve. Like, so that, oh, uh, that's cool. Uh, like, uh, so, so it's kind of like if you, if you uh, don't have a, a family... <laughs> <laughs> and you, or you like the people, the artistic vibe more. You just decide, hey, uh, let let's party hard. And uh, so, so, but what was interesting was, um, there was this girl, uh, and she was, I believe, twelve or thirteen. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened was that uh, she wanted to make a film, and uh, the 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 biggest problem is that when you're that young, and I mean, like, I was surprised she was so fluent in English, like, even though she was, uh, she was German, like, yeah. we, we basically shot the whole thing in English, and uh, uh, she, she was, like, because our actors were, were Anglophone. Oh, okay. uh, So, uh, but, uh, mm -hmm. and so she was the director, and I was basically doing the, the, the DOPing, yeah. but also... Uh, partly helping her to to produce it and to make sure people were there at the right time because I think that's like also something in in the kino cabaret world where you really have to like you always have to improvise. Nobody is there only working for your film, so they are also doing side projects. Sure. So yeah. you you kind of like have an actor that is maybe working like two other films, especially in these bootcamp situations mm -hmm. when there is not so many actors. So you kind of like have to figure out, okay, this project is going to shoot from here to here. Okay, that's my chance. I'm going to grab her that moment. <laughs> I'm going to shoot until there. And then... And then, like, like to to figure that out, especially if you if you if you're twelve or third, it's uh, yeah, it's it's not easy. And so we actually, um, I, I I shot a, um, um, I, I shot I think this this cabaret, it was three days. I shot three films. Like if I if I say I helped her shooting her film, but I also uh, helped my girlfriend to shoot her film, and I also helped myself shoot my film. <laughs> Oh, wow. So, yeah, three so and basically, one. Oh, I was yeah. deeply involved with with with, with yeah. yeah, like four. And then I think I only uh, acted in one other film, uh, and also I did the DOP in a f in a fifth. So you <laughs> kind of like like I said, you are involved in in many projects, uh, and and so uh, editing I only did two. So mm. like. Uh, like because editing is is uh, takes a lot of time, yeah. and so I, I, I but I, I did the the it, the one was called Wizard of Oz that was with a girl, and so uh, what uh, what she did she was basically taking the Wizard of Oz story uh, 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 into the realm of today, Ooh. and Ooh. Uh, uh, the the Wizard lands in Berlin like quick you know is usually in Berlin so yeah. it. it, 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 it uh, 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 he lands in Berlin and tries to find, uh, uh, I think Marlin 
Oh, is it Marlin? Ah, I forgot the name. I was, uh, I, but he's searching for that girl. The, the, that uh, was the great and that, powerful Oz. Yeah, exactly. So, so, and it was just so hilarious because we had this this actor, and he was just like long gray hair, yeah. super cool, and 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 it was completely. It, it was it was it was a brilliantly acted, and so like pulling that off, and and also trying to to cope with the tire because. If you, if uh, Lilith, that was the girl's name, she mm. was also acting in a different film because if you're a kid and somebody needs a kid for a film, mm, <laughs> it's yeah. very highly wanted. It's not so common. No, so, it's... so, so she had that acting thing going, and and but we managed in the end to to shoot the film and finish it, and I'm 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 really happy about it because it's cool to be able to just like like pass on, but also to help people to to realize their dreams. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's I don't know I, I I feel like it's it's always a a great great feeling and then at the end to not sacrifice like your own stuff if you get that done and then somebody else's and and help here and there I don't know that's that's the best. You really got uh, to see all the spots. So, you seem to see the acting, the directing, the organizing, the editing. Yeah, I I did sound uh, uh, yeah. in one in one film. So, <laughs> but uh, that that was actually also. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, that one is. Yeah, I can. I can maybe make playlists or something. Uh, the the the, um, the the I think the biggest film that I've so long shot was actually in Montreal last mm. year. No, two years ago. Like when I came to the Kino Cabaret in Montreal, I, I submitted my application, and they basically said, "Yeah, cool." Uh, and so I, I shot this film about. Uh, it's a story that is um so the typical nice guy uh, mm. uh meets with his his uh, best friend who just uh, uh who just separated okay and he's kind of like making an uh, making an uh, uh like advances on her mm. and and she's like nah come uh, d- okay. d- don't don't do that uh, and and she's like she wants a, a girl's night out oh so because he thinks Okay, my well shot. maybe that gives me a shot. He he decides to go for it, so says, "Oh yeah, sure, why not have a girls' night out?" So yes, so they course. actually dress. Uh, uh, she uh, so he, so he gets uh, dressed up as a, a girl, mm-hmm. and so uh, and then they they basically like go out and and go to a party. So the party scene was shot at the the uh, uh, kino. Because the Kino usually the the the, guy, the guys at Kino Toronto uh, Kino Montreal know how to party, so like they have this <laughs> this huge party going, yeah. and and so we basically used that undercover to shoot, and there were actually guys in our like there was a guy and he's in the film yeah. and he was flirting with our actor dressed <laughs> as a girl. <laughs> That's that how camera. good we got it done. <laughs> <laughs> we have it on camera, and mm. it's in the film. And I think he was drunk, and uh, <laughs> he was not acting like like we, like uh, it was. It was just there, and so. Um, but it's just uh, it's just like, and so we have that story. He get he he gets dressed up, and also, um, yeah, I, I think it was a hard for me. It was the first time that I really sat down and and wrote a script. And I get got like a lot, a lot of feedback from different people in the in the in the in the before. Like I was first, I wanted to do uh, like uh, so many actors, and then I noticed it's not working. Like I have to, I have to slim it down to make it make it break it more down to the core what I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so so it's it's really hard because you know there's only seventy two hours, and you have you have to be quick. I really and like- so yeah, we 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 shot that. So I, I really like the idea where you're filming people at like the film festival who don't realize that like the, the, there's a fine line between what's real and what's not real. And like you've somehow merged those together. You think you're watching a film, you're actually part of Absolutely. the film. Oh, I really like that. Actually, actually, there's uh, there's also um, the, the I think the, the organizer of Kino Toronto is also in the film. Mm-hmm. He's also dancing in the background, <laughs> like it's 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 really it's really we were really undercover, and it was it was also funny because the party, the Kino Montreal rented the smoke machine for the filming, 
And so I wanted that smoke machine, obviously, for the party. So I brought that smoke machine to the party. And everybody was like, yeah. And the, the organizer was like, amazing that you did that you that you made that smoke. And I was like, yeah, we were shooting the film. And he was like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you said yes. Like the guy said, yeah, you can you can use it. Mm-hmm. So I brought the smoke machine. Like they have kind of like this technical, like they have the, the in the basement, they have like a, a little area where they have like all the technical stuff, like all the cameras. Mm. They're like, they're like usually three guys that are uh, like one is a grip. The, there's one that is camera and there's another one with grip so they like give out all the equipment make or make sure that everything is fine that gets back and forth so um and something else that i have to mention is in in montreal also people like everybody who's working for the for kino is getting paid like i i like everywhere else on the whole world everybody's just doing it for fun but montreal because they have such a big like yeah, yeah. group of followers and they, they have the membership and everything like they have actually set up a business and they, they do it uh, uh, in a way that is, uh, looks like sustainable in the long term. So I think, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a big dream. Uh, uh, and it takes probably like, I think they, it took them a while to get there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's still beautiful and it's definitely something uh, that that uh, is, is worthwhile going for uh, but yeah so we brought this smoke machine and uh, it's it's basically completely amazing uh, everybody's like partying hard <laughs> we shoot our film and uh, and then uh, we are done and so uh, for the for the time frame so the the scene where she gets dressed up and everything we shot that on the first day uh, where we had the gear like we got the gear in the morning at yeah. eight grabbed it everything put in a uber uber driver was not happy about it <laughs> so we drove everything to the to the location mm. and then and then and then shot there and uh so and yeah and we had to leave at four because the actress our main actress we were shooting in her place so uh she 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 had uh, uh i don't know what what it was i think she had an appointment or something so we had to get everything done in those eight hours and it was it was really really a crazy schedule uh, because it kind of like especially with the makeup and everything mm-hmm. and so we managed to get it done. It was a very tight call. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember when we had like changing the camera from one angle to the other. I would basically talk uh, like tell the gaffer uh, that the, the the bathroom could be wrapped because we we're done with the bathroom already. And uh, we would, we would, uh, so, so kind of like these things, like everything is happening uh, in parallel. Mm-hmm. And, and, but we got it done. We shot it. And the next day, there was nothing. I had one day free. I had no location. We had to wait until actors were ready. And so everything else happened basically in the evening. Like I had to, because we, we had like this was a party scene. So we needed it is on the night. So like the whole day, I was basically actually I was shooting something else at that moment. But yeah. like so in the evening, in the evening we 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 started again, and so we shot everything uh, uh, together and uh, got uh, the whole scene done. Because there's like one scene at the end where they're sitting at the at the bus station. We have the party scene, and then also where he le- learns to to walk in high heels, which is uh, quite hilarious. <laughs> so like. Like all of these these well, things. What's the story? Uh, about? Uh, yeah, I think I think um, it's. Sorry. What was the story? What's the story about? about? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he is he is definitely interested in her, but but she's just coming out of this this uh, this relationship, and so. Why do you end up in um, high heels though? It, it, <laughs> Uh, no, but because he dressed up as a girl, they wanted to do a, a girls' night out. So they like, oh. like he basically gets like. I think I think uh, uh, we we got her like uh, 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 or him. Uh, it's ah, uh, oh damn it! I was not. I'm so sorry. I was I was not gender confirmed properly. So I have to admit um, that actually uh, uh, it's they uh, um, like my my. Uh, main actress or actor is they so uh it's a queer person so i have to i have to uh admit that i just completely yeah well sorry uh, no worries, i'm very very deeply sorry but yeah i will i will continue uh so so basically uh they uh was uh, dressed up as a as a girl and uh had high heels and uh 
so so a dress and jewelry and everything. And then we shot basically the way where they together wo- go out of the house and go to the party. And so like they have fun, like everybody has, has fun and enjoys it, but but uh, uh, they they grow grow increasingly frustrated because they're not dancing with her. But with with random other guys, yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, they the, those guys they're not uh, treating uh, 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 them very well. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you have that situation where where it's kind of and then like they they, they go together out of the place because uh, yeah enough is enough. And so at the bus station you just have that conflict breaking out uh, yeah. where where. Uh, it's it's basically, it uh, yeah, yeah. It's it gets real and it also gets to the core, uh, and and I think that was that was that was also incredible. Mm-hmm. Like um, because I had this script, and we had this last scene, and it was not working. Mm-hmm. Like the conflict was not breaking out because what was what was being said, it did not it did not create any conflict. Hmm. And when I was writing the script, it was not clear to me that it would not work. So hmm. sometimes you think I was it's sitting work. there. I was sitting there. I was sitting there at the bus station, like we were shooting it, and we we had the last scene, and we had like it was probably like around eleven. Yeah. So I knew we need to get rushed back to the party because we have to shoot the party. So yeah. so like time was time was really like running out, and so I had to last minute change the script, and so. Um, I think the the dialogue goes somehow. I'm I'm a little bit like I'm now uh, uh, very loosely attached to it. I, it's so long, it's like two years ago. So right. the dialogue is basically kind of like uh, like the, the, it revolves around how bad uh, 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 they got treated at the party, mm-hmm. and yeah. so the the main character like uh, uh, she basically. Uh, uh, tells tells something like um, ah damn it I I like uh, can we do a quick break I'm gonna figure it out I, I have to <laughs> okay, I have to yeah, yeah, go yeah. into uh, uh, like, like uh, okay he found his he found the the notes of his so he's good he's he's ready back he's back again <laughs> thanks for the for the quick interruption so basically. Um, so, so the, the, uh, he's com- complaining about, or, or they is complaining about how they feel because, uh, uh, they've been treated so badly. And so, um, the, the, normally, uh, the dialogue would just like flatten out and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and then I was like, nah, this is not working. And so basically, uh, the, the line that I think is, is still great that i just came up with is 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 just uh but you're a girl so so the uh, the, the 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 guy is basically saying that it's okay for her to be treated like that and for him it's not okay so kind of like Ooh. i think I, I i at least i tried to really go down uh, uh, misogynist uh, idea yeah. that is like underlaying, and so I, yeah, it was just like <laughs> you wanted <laughs> to I'll, show that, like, uh, um, yeah, because that's like the the core of it. Like if you if you just uh, uh, wear a woman clothes to get somebody in the bed, like or or to persuade your 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 girlfriend or your your friend who is not your girlfriend but your your, your friend to like this is like this is not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> so I I thought like yeah it's it's not a healthy idea and uh, I think I, I tried to 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 put that in the film. It I mean it evolved. It was first a totally different story. So what, like with what? with every iteration. When I are don't you know. showing this video? Are you <laughs> showing it at the next keynote, or when does do you think you're gonna release? Um, it? So, so uh, there there is actually uh, something interesting coming up. So, Kino uh, Kino Montreal has recently started a st- uh, like a streaming website where they're gonna show a lot of uh, films. Uh, so, I believe that is uh, the place where it will be released. Uh, but 
I don't know exactly when they will do that. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, this this should be the place where uh, it will be will be available to to watch. Yeah. Well, you, you can bring it. Uh, the, the 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 title is this nice guy. Yeah. This nice so, guy. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it, so, that yeah. is one thing that you mentioned that this keynote is not really meant for um, releasing the film quite yet. It's like either it could be a testing ground or it could be. So you you don't really necessarily keep the videos online like a YouTube channel where everyone can come find them later on. But uh, maybe maybe well, I, that. I don't know. Maybe that's something in the future. I I, I uh, uh, one of my friends usually makes uh, makes like also makes kinos uh, or makes films film during kino coverage. And mm -hmm. he usually has like a, lo a lot of VFX effects that he builds and stuff. Like yeah. he's really heavy on VFX. But he has no time during the cover to really finalize those VFX. So usually he makes the film, he shots it, shoots it, makes a very, very basic rough VFX on it. Mm -hmm. And then later when he is home and he has time, he basically finalizes the stuff because once you've shot it and you just have to work on your computer uh, to finalize it, that it's kind of like worthy to be put on air and you don't have the pressure anymore of the cabaret. It's it's a, it's I think it's also a nice idea if you know how to like so the, to make it work in the first place mm -hmm. and you don't rely on have to reshoot it whatever because it's really hard to to find the same people again so so uh, it's a totally doable idea to shoot something that needs heavy post processing True. and then do the post processing after the initial screening at the cabaret and and just uh, uh, finalize it later and then upload it so that the world can see it. Like yeah. uh, that is uh, that is uh, yeah. yeah, and you still have shown it at the screening, and you already do you shoot it in the time, but it's just that uh, usually the resources. At, at, uh, at yeah, I mean you have some kind of limitation. Uh, well, it looks like we we've been going and, and VFX is not that. Huge. Yeah. Yeah, the VFX is actually one of those things that you don't really see a huge amount of keynote, but but that maybe that's just the Toronto keynote. Maybe you see it elsewhere. Um, I think maybe it's just one of the things you start to do it for a long time, and then you'll start to put in more advanced uh, effects in there. Maybe yeah, I think I think I think I. Th but I see I see quite some people also experimenting with VFX. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's like Paul is John is still like doing something there and i think uh, it takes time and it takes practice but mm -hmm. i mean kino is a good place to learn it if you want to approach it it just takes a lot of effort definitely that's true like that's true. vfx is super super long and uh, yeah it's hard we do it. um so we've been going for an hour and a half so uh, we we can uh, i don't know the, the, if you want to promote something before we start to wrap thing up, is there a certain project you got in the go you want to briefly shout out about? Uh, I think, I think, um, um, I mean, of course the upcoming keynote. Well, jo join, uh, uh, join the upcoming screening and uh, we will also do a little uh, Christmas uh, special, uh, probably uh, seeing if we can find uh, a few older films that that are christmas related and then do more like a, a networking meeting for christmas and um, uh, date uh, will probably be let mm -hmm. me guess uh, the um wait a minute what is it it is probably the 16th of december oh, but wow. uh these things can always change, so uh, you should definitely, if you wanna, if you wanna join and maybe uh, network some a little bit or see some older films, um, then uh, then then come to our Facebook page and and uh, look for the events, and you will yeah, we will put the, the dates there. So yeah. that's usually like how we run. We are we are building on a website. It's not yet done, but it oh. will be soon. I hope, cool. uh, maybe for the next year. So yeah, these things they will happen. We have to we have to push forward. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, the next screening is basically on the Wednesday. Uh, we we always choose the Wednesday, the twenty fifth of November. It's usually the the last November in the month, uh, yeah. and. Uh, so yeah, it would be nice to see a lot of people there uh, joining, uh, having good discussions, and uh, yeah, maybe find people and uh, do some quarantine movies. You can even still participate in the challenge. 
Like, if you send us an email, say, hey, this is my film. It's uh, n maybe not two minutes, but it's one minute and it's just a quick idea and you're into it and you get it done and send yeah. it to me on Tuesday evening, I will screen it. It will be there. Like, I'm very flexible when it comes to that. Uh, just on Wednesday, it will be very tight. It, uh, <laughs> like it. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, maybe. Uh, we, like, like we a little bit preparation is there but uh yeah we we are we are very underground and we are flexible so uh that is that is totally uh our mm, idea and so yeah whatever goes goes definitely so that's the that's the kino toronto make sure you guys check it out um thanks for being on the show today and uh i'm sure a lot of our viewers will be Definitely, the filmmakers have definitely got to check this out because go find a Kino near you. You're in for an exciting event meeting that you're not going to experience anywhere else. Uh, Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure.